how's it hanging fellas i'm otis and this is another episode of wreckfest and in today's episode we're doing more of world mashers you know what last episode i was doing this insanely long as you can see uh challenge but unlike the last one i did which was insanely long somewhere here uh which one is it this one this one gave me shit look at the amount of points i have in it like barely above half of it and this one I have most of it because I lost one race, but I didn't really care much. Today's episode we're gonna do, I don't know, fucking these two maybe? Or maybe these two? Fucking, who cares? This one. Should I do the same car? You know, last time we drove this car so fucking much. Let's check out. Oh, never mind, I actually have to drive this car, okay. <laughs> oh, there it is. Someone painted the sides black, but whatever. I don't mind. I guess I actually have to drive this car. I don't know if it's a mid-size challenge, or maybe it's the regional challenge, or whatever the fuck, but it's, uh, it's a good thing, because this car is really fast, as you can see by me getting ahead of everyone immediately. But I do have a new car that's an upgraded version of the la a previous car I was using, so would like to check out how that performs it's much better or just slightly better the wraith now that blue car in front of us was actually on the icon uh, for this challenge if you didn't notice and it seems to be some kind of awesome fucking ultra badass car that I gotta defeat I gotta unlock it why would I but Oh, you fucker. I'll have your guts. I was talking about Mortal Kombat reveals in the trailer. So, Sindel trailer, along with Shao Kahn. I'm just gonna keep saying Shao Kahn. I don't care that he's now General Shao. It's harder to pronounce, and everybody knows him as Shao Kahn. Nobody calls him Shao. Shao Kahn. The Shao on its own sounds weird. It means rage in Polish, but I don't think that was the intention. Shao. That's... It's spelled differently, so it definitely wasn't their intention, but uh, it's kind of funny because he's often very enraged. Oh, brother. Fuck. And what else? What else? What else? Oh yeah, you know what? I was talking about Sonic Prime and I was explaining all the Eggmans. Well, the Eggman after the fucking not giving a fuck teenage Eggman, which is the worst one. It's like what? Eggman in his 20s? Like an artsy Eggman who does yoga all the time and He's a vegetarian, he's like a hipster, and he's like into Japan, but I got a feeling he's not Japanese. He's supposed to be like one of those people who are just obsessed with Japanese culture. I actually fucking lost. Well, that's just a... I, I ain't fucking allowing that to happen. Fuck you. Actually, I could have... Ah, shit, whatever. Didn't... You know, it didn't really matter if I fucking won or not. Let me see. Because last episode I raced against some really interesting looking cars. This time around they don't really look all that cool. This one's kind of cool. I want to take a picture of it. I need pictures of cars because I got nothing to put on thumbnails recently. I ran out of like special cars. Should I take a picture of this guy? Rafe? I mean, it is a pretty cool looking car. Rings. It's blue. Is it a Sonic reference? Yeah, so I, I don't really... I like that character, actually, but I'm just, like, not sure what the fuck he's supposed to represent. Like, Eggman is his, in his 20s? Some shit? I don't fucking know. Then you have Mr. Dr. Eggman, which I think is supposed to be the Dr. Eggman you see at the beginning. After he took over the, the fucking world, and he... that's the thing I don't get. So we start the show by having like a normal Sonic world with Pink Hill Zone and all his all, all Sonic friends, 
And then Eggman, you know, gets a hold of these crystals and he shatters the timeline. And then Sonic is in a post-apocalyptic world, but it seems like that post-apocalyptic world is not the same world that he was just in just in the future. No, it seems like it's a completely different reality where Sonic doesn't exist, so Eggman just took it over, no problem. Because there was very little resistance. And now Knuckles and Rouge are like the... The rebellion leaders that are trying to fight them. The Eggmans, but it, it's strange, I don't know, I don't know don't know how I feel about the story. I don't fucking like the show all that much. Other than it being... If it wasn't Sonic and it was just so... It's own original thing. I don't fucking watch it at all. I only watch it because it's Sonic and I like Sonic. Also, there's this... I thought it was a movie, but... Uh, there's like this animated TV show uh, called My Dad the Bounty Hunter. I thought it was a fucking movie. But then I looked it up and it has two seasons. And I'm like, that's not a movie, that's a fucking show? Well, that made me not want to watch it. I actually was wa wanted to watch it, but now I fucking see that it's multiple episodes and two fucking seasons. And it's like, oh, fucking God, I don't fucking want to watch it now. I wanted to just sit down for an hour and a half, watch a fun family animated movie with a funny premise. Not sit down and get engaged in some fucking bullshit. I don't have time to be watching a TV show, and I don't want to start a TV show and then never finish it. Because that would make me feel even worse than not watching it to begin with. Because not watching it to begin with, I don't fucking care, but starting something and then not finishing, I fucking hate that. Have I ever did that with a Let's Play except Battlefield 1 we don't speak of? You don't even remember that, you don't even care. I finish all my Let's Plays. If I was a normal Let's Player, I wouldn't bother to sit like 30 episodes of Wreckfest doing a bunch of races that are annoying as fuck. But I'm not a normal Let's Player, I'm a fucking insane one, so I'm doing... I'm finishing this game no matter what. Because I don't like leaving shit unfinished. That's why I sit so long in the bathroom, because I don't like to leave shit unfinished. And then there's Eggman when, I don't know, he's old, Grandpa Eggman. He's cool, he's funny, he does have some like back in my day kind of lines, but it's done for laughs instead of actual trying to be some kind of commentary. So yeah, it's funny, I like it. I just don't like the baby and the teenage version. It's a rape. I feel like I could easily beat this game this week, unless this game actually does throw a curveball, like I did last time I played it, and doesn't allow me to finish it unless I go back and farm a bunch of experience, which would be absolutely fucking dreadful if that were the case. Ooh, nice, fucking smooth move. Yeah, so that's all I want to say. The trailer for MK. One was really nice, but then the next day on Gamescom, whatever, game conference, uh, they wanted, they revealed like a whole 17 minute long, just the beginning of the game. And the first chapter is gonna be Kung Lao, so already spoilers, Kung Lao is gonna be on the first episode's thumbnail, and we're gonna play as Kung Lao. Actually, the game begins with Shang Tsung, who is at first he looks like an he looks like Shang Tsung. I was kinda hoping he would have the same voice actor, but he has somebody who sounds vaguely like him. I don't know, I feel like other than Johnny Cage everybody and Liu Kang, everybody has a new voice actor. So yeah, Johnny Cage and Liu Kang are the only ones. I love what they did that what what they did with the plot of Mortal Kombat. I don't think any other franchise has ever done that. Or this game is both a sequel and a reboot, because it reboots the timeline of Mortal Kombat, but it's a sequel to the events surrounding Liu Kang. Because Liu Kang gained his godly powers in MK11. And now he's shaping 
a different timeline to be, I don't know, fucking all perfect or something? Or was he sent to this timeline to be its protector? Or did he chose this timeline and he decided this is where he's gonna stay? Also, it's funny because in MK11 there's so much fucking time travel bullshit that... I, was, I think I was talking about that at What If, because this new MK1 game introduces the idea of Liu Kang traveling between timelines. What if we actually go back to the original timeline? Like, from the very first games. That ended with Armageddon and then there was the reboot with MK9. And now we get another pseudo reboot. Which is a very interesting take on it. It's kind of how MK9 handled the reboot, where the game begins and there's like... It's straight up picks up where Mortal Kombat Armageddon left off. But then Raiden sent a message back in time, so we technically just rebooted the series like 10 minutes into the game. And then we are like at the event of the original Mortal Kombat. Except now Raiden is interfering and trying to make the events play out differently, which they kind of do and kind of don't. And then by MKX the events are completely different, so... I still like MKX the most out of all the Mortal Kombat so far. It just hit like my favorite characters and I don't know, it played really fucking good. It's another one of those races that I completely spaced out and all I wasn't even paying attention to what I was doing. I'm just driving around man. What's so hard about it? It's a no-brainer. This game's great, I love it. No matter what I've said in those previous episodes where I was just simply upset. I wasn't being myself, I needed to eat a Snickers or some shit. Yeah, and in the trailer they show Shang Tsung, who at first looks like his old self, but then it's revealed that the old man is just a fraud, you know, because Shang Tsung likes to pretend to be other people a lot, so... He also here Shang Tsung is not a powerful sorcerer servant of Shao Kahn because Shao Kahn doesn't even it's not even a Khan. And also Sindel is the queen of Outworld, so what'll happen to Edenia? Is Edenia ruled by someone else or is Outworld and Edenia like merged together now to the same place? I'm not sure. So there's a lot of realms other than Earth Realm and Outworld, Nether Realm and the MK Universe. There's the Chaos Realm, there's the Order Realm, there's the Dream Realm, uh, there's some other Desertania, and there's some other ones. Can't remember them right now. I think there's like the realm between realms where all the Elder Gods reside. That's where Raiden goes to consult the Elder Gods. Which he liked to do oh so much. I hope Liu Kang does it at least once in this game. I'm playing Mortal Kombat for the lore. And I really mean it. Yeah, so Shang Tsung is like a snake oil salesman. And he's trying to scam people out of money. By selling potions. Which I don't think he's actually making potions. I think he's genuinely a sorcerer, just not a very skilled one. He's not skilled enough to... to do all the fucked up experiments he did in the original timeline. Like, Melina's not his experiment anymore. Now she's genuinely Katana's sister. Except she's sick with the Tarkatan disease, that's why she's becoming a Baraka. Uh, and also... Ermac is my favorite character, is, is a DLC character, but that doesn't mean that he won't appear, that doesn't mean that he won't appear in the actual story, he won't be playable unless you buy him, but he might actually, you know, you can fight against him and stuff like that. That's, this race looks fucking boring, not gonna lie. 
Angry Hornet. This looks like the most boring race ever. It's the race to school. And, um... Wait, that's not the skin I had for my boss. What the fuck? I had, like, a pink one. Who repainted my fucking boss? Bullshit. I know last time my boss was, uh, yellow, but... I even shown you in my garage at the beginning of, I, I don't know, the end of the last episode, that I had a boss and it was pink. It wasn't fucking blue. Fuck. Anyway, and... So Shang Tsung is also a pre-order character, so he's... Well, you know, you might be able to, like, put fight against him, kind of how in MKX you fight, you fought in the story mode against Tanya, and then she became a DLC character, because she had a fully realized moveset, I guess, she just simply wasn't playable, kind of like Rain is also a character you fight against in MKX, but you can't play as him and he's not even a DLC, even though he has movesets and everything, just like uh, Baraka also, who was missing from MKX, even though you fought against him. I think MK11 had Cyrax you fight against, or Sector, who also had movesets and stuff, he just couldn't play as them. You only fought against them in the story, so I imagine this game's also gonna have characters who are gonna be, you're gonna be able to fight against, but you're not gonna be able to play ever. Because it seems like that's just a thing that they do. Yeah, so Shang Tsung is a pre-order character, so he definitely is playable, but since he's a pre-order character, they want you to pay to play as him. I imagine there's not gonna be a chapter where you actually play as Shang Tsung. There's probably gonna be some fights against Shang Tsung, just like Quan Chi and Ermac, and maybe even Takeda? I don't have to explain the lore behind who the fuck is Takeda right now. Because Takeda used to be Kenshi's son, but Kenshi's like young now, so he's probably not gonna have a son, especially Takeda's age, so maybe the theory was right that Hanzo Hasashi, who used to be Scorpion, is now Takeda, because Hanzo Hasashi was also the master who taught Takeda how to fight in the previous timeline. Because Scorp the current Scorpion is Kwai Liang, who in the previous timeline was actually Sub-Zero. And Sub-Zero right now is Bihan, who was Sub-Zero in MK9, but then he got killed by Scorpion and became Noob Cybot. So I imagine there's not gonna be a Noob Cybot on this timeline. Because if there is, then that means we're not gonna have a Sub-Zero anymore. Because Kuali Yang is already Scorpion. Hanzo Hasashi, who was the previous Scorpion, is probably not gonna become the new Sub-Zero. That'd be fucking weird. And there's also Smoke. And Smoke, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero are like brothers and shit now? And they're in the trailer, where Kung Lao kicks their ass. That's the first three people you fight against. Smoke, Scorpion, and then Sub-Zero. And you fucking kick their asses right at the beginning of the story. By the way, these cutscenes look fucking gorgeous. It actually gets me excited making a Let's Play of that game, because they just fucking look so good. I, I'm kinda curious how many chapters that game's gonna have and how long they're gonna be. Because I'm probably gonna do it like that, you know, one chapter per episode, like I did with the previous Mortal Kombat games. But how long are they gonna be? I don't know. They look so good, though. And what good year to be a fighting game fan, which I'm not, but if you are, then you're probably very lucky, because you get a new, amazing-looking Mortal Kombat game. Uh, there's a new Street Fighter game that already came out, and it's so good, I actually considered buying it myself and making a let's play of it. Even though I never played a more Street Fighter game before. There's also a new Tekken game coming out, but uh, I don't know anything about that one. I'm not saying that that one was ugly or garbage or some shit like that, I just wasn't really following the news with the new Tekken game. All I did in this fucking race was hold R2 and turn left sometimes most boring fucking shit ever. Also, they revealed a new Mortal Kombat Conquest mode, which is like a... I don't know what the fuck is it. They showed off Johnny Cage walking around, it's like board game looking 
stage where you kind of like you move them around left up left right and down you can freely, freely walk around which is a shame and i guess you're gonna solve puzzles and get into occasional fights against some specially modified enemies i don't know it looks really silly I don't think I might make a bonus episode out of it, but I don't think I'm gonna make a whole separate let's play of that. And also, since I was talking about how I would love to play a, a lot of PS2 games, and I'm gonna emulate them on my Steam Deck, I was thinking about Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. That's a definite let's play I wanna fucking make. But there's also Mortal Kombat Armageddon's Conquest mode where you play as Shujinko, and it's like, do I wanna fucking play that one? I'm not sure. Actually, that was the Deception's uh, Conquest mode. Uh, Armageddon, I think, had Taven. Also, there's a lot of like PS2 era Mortal Kombat characters that they bring it back, and some of them are just cameos and not actually fully playable characters, but they still might appear in the story, such as Reiko was in one of the trailers, so he might be in it. I don't know how important they're gonna be, but Reiko is in it. Havoc. One I'm excited about surprisingly the most is Mavaro because I always wanted Mortal Kombat stories to actually have Red Dragon Clan be more important than it ever was because it never was important. It exists, it's a rival clan to the Black Dragon which is the clan run by Kano and that's it. That's all we know about them and also at some point we learned that Mavaro is their leader but other than that we don't fucking know anything about them. I don't know if we don't know if they're fucking threatening or anything about them. We don't know shit. See you fellas in the next episode. Bye.